Hello, everyone. We're going to get started in just a minute or so here, just waiting for the last of the attendees to join. Okay, let's get started. Thank you everyone for joining. Um, my name is James Truckle. I'm an applications engineer with Plexum. I'm excited today uh, for, for this webinar on simulating PV inverter systems in real time using the Plex RT box developed by Plexum. To start, I'd like to just provide a brief background on our company and provide a framework for what we are going to discuss today. I'm going to try and keep the webinar to approximately 30 to 35 minutes, so feel free to send us questions along the way using the GoToWebinar control panel uh, at any time during the presentation, and we will either answer them uh, in the chat window or address them at the end of the webinar. So a bit about, a bit about us at Plexum. Uh, we're a team of dedicated engineers with backgrounds in power electronics who have uh, an understanding for the needs of today's engineer. Uh, since our founding in 2002, we have been privately held and providing the simulation software Plex to both industry and academic customers worldwide. Since 2002, Plex's capability itself has improved and Plexum as a company has grown. In addition to our headquarters in Zurich, Switzerland, we do also now have two U.S. presences in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and Seattle, Washington. We have customers in more than 50 countries, and not only are we providing the simulation software Plex, but we now have hardware to facilitate real-time testing of power electronics systems. So just to provide a bit of background on Plex itself before we get into our real-time system, uh, Plex is known to be very fast, a very efficient simulation tool, uh, very easy to learn, an intuitive user experience, in a, an intuitive user experience. In addition to our electrical uh, domain, we also have multiple physical domains for looking at other system dynamics, including uh, uh, thermal for looking at switching and conduction losses of our power semiconductors, uh, magnetic, magnetic domain for uh, modeling up magnetic elements of our circuit, and also a mechanical domain for including uh, complex mechanical loads, perhaps. Uh, so using these different uh, domains, we're able to, to include different dynamics of our system. Uh, included within Plex are also a set of steady state analysis tools which allow, uh, which generate uh, steady state waveforms of your circuit. Uh, we also have small signal analysis tools which will give you a, a Bode plot of your system. Uh, Plex also gives you the, the ability to include C code directly in your model so you can utilize the C script block or the DLL block to directly include C code in your simulation for a software in the loop uh, test. We can also do processor in the loop simulation, which is a, a different offering by Plexum, but we're happy to discuss that offline if there's some interest. Uh, more information is, is on the internet as well. Uh, the Plex scope you're going to see today is a, uh, a nice inbuilt feature of Plex, which allows you to, to view some data and do some quick analysis on your waveforms. 
The RT box was developed entirely in-house to provide a fully integrated real-time environment for our users. So with Plexum, with, you get a really great user experience. And the RT box really does utilize the rich component library of Plex and facilitates automated testing using scripts. So it's all within our tool chain, meaning no third-party solutions are required. Today, during this webinar, I will try to show the value that Plexum simulation tools can bring to your teams researching and developing power electronics systems. We are constantly innovating and developing tools that enable our customers to remain competitive. And then because of our technical expertise, we can continue to support our users with industry-tested knowledge. The RT box was designed to have versatile functionality. What I mean by this is that it can emulate the power stage in a traditional controller hardware in the loop fashion, as we're going to look at in today's example of testing and verifying a PV inverter controller in real time, but it can also be used as a rapid control prototyping system. This means that the user can operate the RT box as a controller and send digital signals to power hardware. This is an important slide, and I want everyone to, to understand a bit of how to judge the performance of Hill systems in general. There are many factors that are important when evaluating Hill systems, and very commonly, the model sample time is used for comparing performance of different real-time platforms. Other factors also need to be considered, including not just the sample rate, but the calculation speed, I.O. latencies, signal resolution, and model implementation flexibility. A combination of all these factors should drive decision making. And a combination of all these factors really drove the development of the RT box. With Plex and the RT box, you have a transparent system with a linear workflow from offline to real-time simulation. The RT box is also scalable, allowing for multiple boxes to be connected for large projects and challenging applications. To maximize performance, the RT box does use the latest system on chip processing unit that combines CPU cores with an FPGA. So while I'm talking about specs, uh, here's uh, some high level specs of the RT box. It has 64 digital I.O. and 32 analog I.O. to interface with a variety of hardware systems. Available to RTBox users are interface boards to commonly used Texas instrument controllers. So this includes the C2000 families on the launch pad and control card architectures. We also have general digital and analog interface boards to help you connect to any control system. As I've said before, uh, a big emphasis for us is on the tight integration between our software Plex and the real-time simulator. Through this integration, we feel that we have one of the most user-friendly systems on the market. Configurations, as you'll see in the demo, are made directly in the Plex schematic so if you happened to already be a Plex user, advancing to a real-time simulation on the RT box will be a very natural progression. Extending this, using Plex, you have uh, really unlimited versatility when modeling your power electronic systems, including uh, various PV inverter systems, and versatility when you're examining different failure modes and designing control schemes. There are no predefined topologies you have to use, and any model you build in Plex can run on the RT box, including components from our thermal, mechanical, and magnetic domains. So not only do you have a very powerful hardware box to execute your model in real time, but you also have a complete software package to work on. The Plex Coder is a tool within Plex that is required to program the RT box. You're going to see this tool in a minute, and it is used to access execution settings, define a target, and generate code. 
Currently, the coder generates standalone C code for a variety of use cases. For this demo, we use the coder to target the RT box. However, custom targets, such as specific embedded controllers, can also be defined. We are providing a framework for users to develop their own target support packages, but we will also be supporting TI targets in an upcoming release. So here I'd just like to tell you a bit about the workflow that I'm going to go through. So I'm going to introduce in a moment Plex Standalone, which is uh, the other tool that you're going to need in addition to the Plex Coder to operate the RT box. So those are the three Plexum products that we're going to be seeing today, the Plex Standalone software, the Plex Coder, and the Plex RT box. So I'm going to demonstrate a typical user's workflow going from the Plex software environment to running a real-time simulation. Um, so what we're first going to do is, as I said, introduce standalone, and then we're going to discretize our model into real-time capable C code. We're going to build that model onto the box, and then we're going to connect to the box and do some tests and uh, some data capture. Um, all right, so let's get started. Okay. So here we see uh, a Plex model and the component library browser. So the library browser here on the left contains a complete set of blocks for modeling a power conversion system and its controls and includes multiple physical domains such as uh, our thermal domain, magnetic domain, and mechanical domain with translational and rotational components and I mentioned the complete controls library as well. So uh, the electrical library, we can take a closer look at that, includes uh, a set of passive components and also a set of idealized power semiconductors. Let's go through these. Also included are uh, a set of pre-built power modules and a set of electric machines. Uh, another thing that's included in Plex, if we go to window and demo models, are a set of demo models um, included in Plex and they contain various types of power converter examples. So we have basic topologies, more complex power supplies, and, uh, and different motor drive examples, and all the way to, uh, to perhaps uh, a grid connected single phase solar inverter. So all of these are openable and modifiable for the user. Um, simply opening the model will open open the model and then you can uh, draw from it and uh, and actually quite easily create a real-time model from from one of these models perhaps okay so as I mentioned here in the yellow schematic we have uh, this pre-built uh, we have this pre-built desktop Plex model of a complete solar inverter system. So when I say desk, or, or, sorry, a, a real-time model, so this model has been, um, has been configured to run on the RT box. So a feedback system that includes a dis discretized synchronous frame controller and symmetrical space vector modulation scheme have already been flashed onto an actual embedded controller. Additionally, neutral point balancing is included in the control logic as is islanding detection based on a slip mode frequency shift algorithm. Finally, system monitoring and fault handling is implemented in finite state machines. So let's talk about our plant subsystem here. The plant model includes a DC bus modeled as a 250 watt module from Trina Solar, a three level or neutral point clamped three phase inverter is also shown, as is the grid. So let's, we can note some of the system level specs. We'll be commanding 70 amps RMS of reference current in the DQ frame. 
and this is interfacing to a 120 volt utility, utility via an RL filter. The DC bus generated from the PV array is above 900 volts, and the modulation switching frequency is 20 kilohertz. There is also a ULRLC test load to show the reaction of the inverter to an islanding situation. Inverters intended to be operated in parallel with an electric power system to supply power to common loads or as an independent power source must meet different UL and IEEE standards. The inverter legs of our model are modeled using IGBT three-level half-bridge power modules from the Plex library. I showed you this library before, but this is a set of power module components including choppers, half, and full bridges. These switches here use sub-cycled switched averaging which allow PWM resolution of under 10 nanoseconds. This oversampling of the PWM signals is to ensure maximum accuracy. Keep in mind that this is still a fully switched model implementation. The full plant model is designed using electrical domain components, so we're connecting with black wires which are carrying currents. Additionally, we have green connections which show the transfer of signal information such as for controlling the gates to the IGBTs or for measuring voltages and currents. The rectangular blocks with round edges at the periphery of the model are part of the RTBox software support package and are used to assign the communications between the device under test and the real-time system. These IOs make a simple association between a signal in Plex and a pin on the RTBox connectors. I can quickly show you the RTBox library. Also included here are blocks uh, to allow data capturing and programmable values through scripting. So really what this means is that all of your setup is in Plex. In this demonstration of a controller hardware in the loop simulation, the IOs will be used such as the digital signals are sent from the controller and captured by the RT box and measurements from meters and sensors within the virtual plant are passed back to the controller as analog signals. So each IO block allows the assignment of channels and scaling and offset parameters for the analog voltages. I'll sh turn on my webcam in a second and you'll actually be able to see the interface to the analog and digital IO. So with that, with some background on the model and application, let's move on to the fun part. I will turn on my, I will turn on my webcam here. Okay, great. Um, so we can see uh, my physical system on my workbench right now. And the Plex RT box is connected to my host computer via the network. I'm just connected point to point right now. So the front of the box here we can see um, contains interface connections for analog and digital signals. So the blue board, if we can distinguish that here, the blue board is a Texas Instruments F2837 dual core Delfino control card where again the current control and space vector modulation algorithms have been pre-flashed onto the MCU. The green board has been developed by Plexum and is an interface or breakout board used to route the signals from the controller hardware to the box. It also does include additional connections for collecting data on an oscilloscope or interfacing to a communications network using a CAN bus. So I will now power on the box by flipping a switch in the back of the unit and we will see a green power light that comes on. 
So we can see there in the top left corner of the webcam that a, a power light has indeed come on. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and return to the uh, computer here. So we can set up our hill simulation and use the computer to adjust some parameters. So let's go to the Plex coder menu, sorry, the Plex coder window rather, which contains several tabbed menus. So we want to generate code for the plant. So I'm gonna choose that here. We can then discretize the model at an appropriate step size to accommodate the calculation time required by the box. And this is based on the system size, complexity, and also the dynamics and time constants within your system. In this case, a step size of 10 microseconds has been chosen. Remember that our PWM capture blocks are sampling every seven and a half nanoseconds, providing plenty of resolution for our tests. Several methods exist in Plex for selecting an appropriate step size for your model. This topic can be further explored individually after the webinar if you are interested. In the next tab here, we can choose to inline specific parameters in the code. So these are parameters that have been inlined that are then become tunable for when the real-time system is in operation. We will revisit this shortly, but we can see here that I've inlined this, a sun installation level, which is down here, and I've also inlined a grid disconnect switch. So as I said, we will revisit these shortly. In the next tab, we define the target and some configuration settings. We can see that the RT box supports commonly used analog and digital voltage ranges. Have a look at these here. We can see that I'm targeting an RT box and my devices on my network would be listed here. And this is what I've chosen to name my box, Arsenal. I'll select that. Great, and now I can build my model. So I'm just gonna do this by, uh, by pressing the build button here. And then the plant model is discretized and the code is generated for the discretized model. It's then compiled and uploaded onto the box. So this process takes only a few seconds to complete at which point a blue light comes on indicating that the RT box is running. So again, I'll, I'll quickly flip on my uh, webcam here to provide you with a bit of information. Sharing my screen here. So the model is still building and now we see that the blue light is, has come on indicating that the, uh, the model is now running on the RT box. So not a whole lot of, uh, of fireworks other than that. You know, I, I will uh, now show something which is very helpful to understand what's happening in our virtual test bench. So I'll turn off my webcam. So a powerful feature built into our workflow is the external mode of the Plex coder. So this allows a user to interact with the real-time system from Plex. Parameters can be tuned on the fly and we can bring back signals from the real-time system into any scope in the model. So we can first connect to the box and this allows all the Plex scopes in the model to become real-time soft scopes. I'm gonna activate a trigger here. I'm gonna double click my scope. I'll actually turn that off for a second. So now these signals that we are seeing are real-time signals. Um, you know, I can talk briefly about the Plex scope, but the Plex scope contains uh, advanced zooming and panning features. So we can zoom in either direction if we're interested. Uh, we have black buttons. We can um, also turn on cursors for measuring time and magnitude data. So I'll quickly turn on, oops, I'll quickly turn on uh, the cursors here. And we can see that, uh, notice using the cursors that there is a DC voltage here of about 
970 volts. So I have zero amps for an output current right now. And this is because I implemented a master enable command for the power system. So I'll invoke that by flipping a dip switch on the breakout board. So I hit the dip switch and now we do see our expected three phase current waveforms. So now let's interact with the model. So currently we can see that the system is grid connected and we have a solar insulation level of one. So I will first set the trigger on channel zero or the DC bus for a falling edge of 900 volts. I will then manually change the sun insulation level from one to 0.5 watts per square meter. So clicking OK and we go back to our scope and we can immediately see the change in the DC voltage. So using this external mode, we can run various test scenarios in this fashion. So this can include to show partial shading conditions, uh, fault conditions in the inverter, a droop or an imbalance of the grid voltages, et cetera, et cetera. So this is really the beauty of hill testing and hill platforms. Unique field cases can all be tested in a laboratory. Okay, so I'd like to show another test here. Um, so I'm gonna go back to my coder options menu and I'm gonna change my trigger channel to our power stage enable signal. And I'm going to tune that to a falling edge of 0.5 to trigger when the power stage is disabled. I will then click on the manual switch to disconnect the grid and create an island with the PV inverter system. We can then see how our system reacts. Quickly change this back to one. Great, so I'm gonna disconnect from the grid. I'm gonna go back to my scope. And we can see how our system reacted. Very quickly within a few cycles of the fundamental frequency of the utility, the inverter output power is reduced to zero. Notice that this island condition, as well as others can be tested in an automated fashion using scripts via XML RPC commands. Data can then be captured for post-processing. So this does conclude my demonstration uh, but we can now uh, review and answer all the questions that attendees have submitted, as well as address some commonly asked questions. Okay. Great, so oftentimes I get the question, are there any limitations of the RT box as far as number of switches? So uh, physically, there are 32 digital IO, so if we think about this, that means that there could be uh, 32 independently operated PWM signals. That does um, mean that depending on your system dynamics, the complexity of your circuit, um, it, might be, it might be that, that you may need uh, multiple boxes in parallel to achieve um, the, the simulation that you want. But physically, the box has a limitation of 32. Uh, all of the pricing uh, information on the RT Box and Plex can all be found online, uh, www.plexum.com, and then go to the store. The required software licenses to run the RT Box are, as I mentioned, Plex. So this can either be Plex standalone or Plex block set. And then you also need a license of the Plex coder. Um, yeah, that's all I have for everyone today. Uh, if there's any other questions right now, uh, please please ask and we can, uh, we can address them now. Or we're happy to do follow-up uh, webinars or conversations individually. You can email info at plexum.com and uh, an applications engineer will, will get back, back to you. Um, 
Wait a couple more seconds for questions. Okay, so that does conclude the webinar. Uh, please reach out to us if you have additional questions. We'll be sending a follow-up email with some information as well. Thank you very much.